coming up on the program today. It's about problems you're facing in your vegetable garden and how to solve them, as well as three methods of organic bug control. Melissa Norris will be with us. She's a podcaster, blogger, and homesteader from Washington State, as well as your garden questions and our garden answers. All that starts right now. It is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show on 860 AM WNOV and W293 CX 106.5. Uh, wherever you may be listening, however you may be listening, whether on those stations, the TuneIn app, the Simple Radio app, through social media, or anywhere in between, I am your host, Joy Baird. Uh, Holly is not with us today. She is traveling. It was uh, pre-planned. She will be back next week. We are live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, there's a number of ways in which you can contact us. You can certainly do that by email at any time at twvgshow at gmail.com or our, twi- uh, our Twitter handle is at twvgshow or hashtag twvg. You can also call us on the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard hotline. It, IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects your plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. Protects uh, newly installed trees and plants, shields uh, per, and pruned and damaged surfaces for your use on roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic and environmentally safe and organic. To find out more, visit ivorganics.com. Also, they are releasing uh, after the show next week, Pacific Time, and you can find it. Uh, we'll give more information next week. Uh, they've got a new line of fertilizer that's coming out that uh, you can uh, win. Uh, we'll give you more details on that. So we're going to get in the program. Uh, when June has come around now, many of our thing, our, our gardens are already planted. Uh, I just finished up planting all of our gardens, uh, the three that you'll see in our videos predominantly, on the website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. You can uh, go there. We have over 1,100 garden videos, short and long format there, as well as uh, replays of the program here. But there, there's problems. We always have problems. You're never going to have a garden situation where there's not a problem. And you can. I'm going to go over several of them that you are facing, that I am facing, that we can learn together how we can solve them. Uh, one being is uh, weeding. We all have problems with weeds. Uh, if you're in container gardening, not so much. If you're in raised bed gardening, not so much because predominantly uh, you've brought in good soil and the soil can, has been properly broke down in the compost form, heated and, and killed the weed seeds. What weeds you may have in the bed is brought in from air, birds, uh, that type of situation, and you can easily weed them because the soil is nice and fluffy. Now, if you're dealing with weeds in a traditional bed, the problem is a little more uh, daunting at times, and you can weed the bed. Uh, you want to get all the roots out. Here's the thing. With the weeding, if you don't get all the roots out, if you just till, uh, it, it kills the plant uh, temporarily. If you uh, till, what you're doing is weeds propagate from three different methods, from seed, from rhizomes, and from root cutting. So just because you've tilled that particular location and it looks good today and it looks good this week, next week all of a sudden it looks like a bed of grass is now growing because all of those weeds in which you had tilled under all had roots. And many of those roots have now each little particle of root has now began to germinate a new growth of uh, top uh, of growth a plant that now is a weed that is piercing through the soil so by removing all the roots by getting with a garden fork or your trowel or your hand uh, and getting as many root fibers as possible you'll greatly reduce the number of weeds in which you are facing uh, in your bed now yes this is a daunting task if you have a large garden uh, it, it can take a while we've we've got 22 beds in our large garden and uh, in-ground beds. We call them raised burns, permanent walk path, designated grow area. And we work the beds a couple of each year until we've pr- progressively purged them of the majority of weeds in which we have in the bed. And since we've added so much mulch, the, mulch, the, my, the weeds that we have in the bed is minute and they're easy to uh, extract. Uh, we don't have a 30-square-foot bed of weeds. We maybe have 
10 weeds in that 30 square foot bed. So weeding is one thing that we need to consistently do. Now, if you have, uh, you, you can spot weed with a chemical, uh, an organic based chemical, BioSafe, that's one of the sponsors on the program. Uh, you can, it's a organic concentrate. It's a concentrate that you, you mix in with your pump sprayer from Chafin, and you can spot spray. It is designed for organic gardening, and uh, you have that 10% discount code uh, if you enter TWVG at the time of purchase. And in the month of June, they got a hold of me last week and said anybody that orders anything from the website at uh, biosafe.net, a free item will be thrown into that package uh, for you. But Biosafe, we are using that uh, in amongst, like our cabbage bed, we'll spot spray the weeds so we don't have to go in there and remove them. Uh, just make sure we hit the, the weed instead of the plant. A watering is another problem in which we soon will be facing, and you can do this in a number of ways. I've installed dripping string oyas in our garden. You can do, we will also include drip irrigation, above ground irrigation, and hand watering in the containers in which we have. Again, if you don't water, your plants are not going to grow. And if you don't water, your plants are more susceptible to stress and uh, disease because they're unhealthy, they're dehydrated, just like the human body. If you are dehydrated, you are more susceptible to diseases and problems and sickness. Same thing for a plant. So we want a consistent watering. We want to remember when to water. We, if, we, if we have an irrigation system set up, we want to set a timer on that for specific amounts of time based on the uh, uh, conditions of the soil and the environment in which we are growing. Bolting plants, plants that are cool weather crops like your spinach, your lettuce, uh, radishes, those type of items are going to seed or getting close to going to seed. Bolting is the process in which a plant has uh, knows the life cycle uh, is just about over. And the ultimate goal of all of these plants are to reproduce, produce seeds in order to carry on the trades for the next year. So by, uh, by, these seeds go, by these plants going to bolt, going to seed, they get very bitter. They are inedible in most cases. Uh, with the exception, now that's, le- that's lettuce and spinach, uh, for example. Radishes, on the other hand, when they go to bolt, they go to flower, they put a little green seed pod on them. Those seed pods are edible, and they do taste just like the root. So you can certainly uh, utilize that, not pull your radishes up whenever they go to bolt, but let them go to seed, and you can catch them when they're green, and you can eat them. If you allow them to dry, then you can save the seeds. Lettuces, leaf lettuce is the same way. We uh, saved seeds from six plants uh, four or five years ago, and we got one pint jar of clean leaf lettuce seed that we have still are using. So a few plants can produce a lot of seed in which you do not have to purchase next year. Be sure you label them. Another problem in which we have and many people face in our gardens are animals that are uh, coming into the garden for a free meal. Predominantly, we have problems, have had problems with rabbits. Many people have problems with deer, uh, squirrel, chipmunks. Uh, With rabbits, we uh, uh, put up a two-foot high poultry fence or chicken wire around our garden, and that has prohibited the uh, rabbits from coming in. Also, if a rabbit does come into the garden, we do not kill it. We force it out to see where it was coming into the property, and then we block off that particular area. Some people may choose to eradicate the, exterminate the animal, and that uh, also works. My grandfather's 82 years old, and he says a dead animal is one that doesn't come back. So that's always something that you can uh, do uh, if you choose to do that method. But uh, BobX is another product that we have a sponsor of. It's an organic, uh, natural product that has uh, garlic oils and uh, natural products in it that is extremely um, effective. Uh, You do not want to open it in the home. It uh, will keep for three or four months after you apply it. You don't want to apply it to your edible plants, but you can spray it around the perimeter or on your uh, bushes and shrubs that these plants, these animals are eating. It works very, very well. Uh, So that's that's another one. Uh, Finally, we're we're seeing June bugs uh, entering the area. I've seen several of them this week. There's a couple of ways in which you can treat the June bug uh, er for eradication. Uh, One is a non-organic means. Uh, There is products called Seven, S-E-V-I-N. Now, this is a nerve agent powder that's designed to kill bugs in the edible garden as well as the ornamental garden. Uh, It is is not an organic means of pest control. 
uh, uh, so keep that in mind if that's something that uh, you're looking at in organic means. And the problem with seven is if you do use it in the organic garden, even though it's not organic, and when you read the instructions, from application to harvest, you have to have 21 days of no application before you can harvest safely those products, those, those, that produce in which you are growing. So keep that in mind. Now, there, uh, the other means of organic means of getting rid of June bugs, if you're looking for an organic method uh, to kill the June bugs, uh, you can um, build a June bug trap. Uh, you can use a jar or a bucket, place a white light over that particular jar or bucket and at the top of it and cont- uh, contain put about uh, two inches of vegetable oil in the bottom of that bucket or jar. The container, uh, leave it open, and the June bugs will fly towards that light, and then they'll fall into the jar or the bucket, and they'll get coated in that oil uh, and the vegetable oil, and they can't fly away. So that is a, a good way of doing it. Now, other ways to uh, get rid of them, you can attract small snakes. Most people don't want to do that. Frogs or toads are... Uh, they, they'll feed off the June bugs, but that light and the, um, the oil uh, does work very well if you're wanting to do an organic means of June bug removal from your property. So June bugs, weeding, watering, bolting of plants, and keeping animals out of your garden are all problems that we are or soon shall be facing in our vegetable garden. When we come back, we're going to talk about three methods of organic pest control. Now, three, I'm going to give you about four or five here. But controlling the pest in your garden, we talked a little bit about with the June bugs uh, right after this. Got a question? Email the show at twbgshow at gmail.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy, homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. Wouldn't you love to get more from your growing space? By utilizing the square foot garden method and properly spacing your plants, Seeding Square will optimize and organize your veggie garden to grow more greens and less weeds. The square foot color-coded seed spacer is a great tool for any garden, ground, container, or raised bed, and all experience levels, even little green thumbs. For more information, visit SeedingSquare.com. Seeding Square is gardening made simple. Mycorrhizae is a beneficial fungus from PlantSuccessOrganics.com that will greatly increase your plant's germination, ability, and healthier root structure. You can increase seed sprouting, root growth, and general plant germination. Mycorrhizae can be used with hydroponic root cutting, seed sprouting, cocoa core, and soil. PlantSuccessOrganics.com carries powder, granule, and tablet form of mycorrhizae. Increase the level of mycorrhizae in your soil to give your plant the optimal opportunity to produce incredible harvest. For more information and to purchase, visit PlantSuccessOrganics.com. Tall Earth Wood Treatment All-in-One Preservative and Stain offers lifetime protection and creates a unique silver-aged wood finish. All ingredients are non-toxic, eco-friendly, perfect for garden beds and veg trunk. Find out more at TallEarth.com. Free shipping on all orders. Use coupon code W-I-S-C-O-N-V-E-G to save 15% off orders placed at TallEarth.com. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear and all black bags, protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at shieldandseal.com. The fascinating earthworm. This garden fun fact is sponsored by ManureTea.com. Get your three-pack today. Drop the tea bag in water, let steep, and then feed your soil, not your plants. 100% organic. Find out more at ManureTea.com. Always free shipping. There are approximately 2,700 different kinds of earthworms. In one acre of land, there can be as many as one million of them. If an earthworm's skin dries out, it will die. Worms live where there is food, moisture, oxygen, and favorable conditions. If they don't have it, they go elsewhere to find it. 
Rebel Green, responsibly made natural products that are good for you and the environment. Made in the USA, plant-based, vegan, and always toxic-free. Find out more at rebelgreen.com. Use coupon code WIVEG15 to save 15% off your next purchase at rebelgreen.com forward slash shop. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at migardener.com. Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round, pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to migardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. migardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for, annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mel's also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mel's today. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, your home for Garden Talk Radio with your hosts, Joey and Holly Bear. Well, when it comes to pest control, many people uh, who are kind of like hobbyist gardeners or weekend warriors, whatever you want to call it, might go to the garden center, their big box store, and pick up the first thing they see. And they just see insect killer or bug killer or uh, whatever the case is that they're sp- particularly looking for, and they don't read the labels. Many of these m- materials in which you're using, you're spraying on your plants, are a non-selective spray. They, they will kill everything, whether you've got good bugs, bad bugs, and anything in between. You apply to the plants to kill the bugs that are problems to the plants, but it's, it'll kill everything, so you've killed every ecosystem, all the ecosystem in your garden. Well, there's a number of methods in which you can do organic pest control uh, in this uh, to, to not kill all those bad bugs. Number one, we talked about it in the first segment, is keep your plants watered. A healthy plant is a happy plant, is a plant that's able to fight off diseases and or pests much more successful than a dehydrated plant or one that is uh, not high, uh, properly nutrient uh, rich because of poor soil that's growing in. So that's one. Let's keep the plants watered. Simple enough. Secondly is everybody, you know, you've got your fingers. Use your fingers. Now, this may not be the most uh, appealing to some people who are fidgety about squashing bugs, but that is the number one defense, uh, squishing the bugs and getting rid of them or picking them off and putting them in a bucket and disposing them in another means or method to get rid of them that way. Now, that... You, you, you want to be – you want to, a garden is not something you plant in the end of May and then you come back the first week of August and you harvest it. That's not how this works. Uh, just like in big ag industry, uh, to a certain level, the farmers look at the fields. They go out and view them and see if there's any problems, uh, uh, pest or a disease in which they were not uh, – uh, expecting to have happen. Same thing we happen ha- happens in the garden. We have to go out and look at this garden. If we, for our leafy greens, if we harvest on a regular basis, that's going to help prevent the plant uh, from from getting insects. Uh, you're you're looking at the plant. You're harvesting the larger leaves, which uh, then uh, makes the plant smaller, which is less detectable to insects in which might want to attach onto the plant as well. Uh, also, aphids are a predominant problem in the garden. They are essentially the tick of the 
plant world where they will suck the juice and the life out of a plant if enough of them attach to them. There's black aphids, white aphids, brown aphids. They all have the same uh, – per, per, uh, they, they all do the same thing. They attach per, mostly under the leaf and they'll suck in the, the juice out of it. So one thing in which you can do is – Maybe not weed the garden to its full extent, not remove all the weeds. We've had this uh, several years. We have seen where we have left weeds because we just didn't get around to it, uh, that these aphids will attach themselves to the weeds, uh, thistles, uh, lamb's quarter or goose foot based on your terminology. Uh, we've left those plants in the garden, and they've gotten two, three foot tall, and they've been just smothered by aphids and the, in the uh, eggplants, the tomatoes, the peppers, the zucchini, in which were feet away, never, ever got touched. So that's another means in which you can do some plant or some, some pest control is, yes, leave some of those in the garden to allow the, the weeds, to allow the, the bad insects to attach themselves to it. Also bringing birds into the garden. I've got all the bird uh, feeders set up in the large garden. One is an actual bird feeder. The other four locations are a piece of wood with a tuna can nailed to the top of it with some holes for drainage. And the birds love them. The, the sparrows and the robins, they'll come in. And I've got multiple different types of bird seed in that in those containers. And the birds will perch on the tuna can and feed off of it. Now, the the, the expectation is, and what we've seen happen in the past, is the birds will stay and, and come back day after day and throughout the day. And as these plants get larger, tomato hornworms may come to attack your tomatoes, but the birds see it and they'll pick off those worms or other uh, insects that the birds will feed off of. And the bird seed or the bird feeders are just a way to hold the birds in that particular geographical area of the garden. So that's a great way to do it, and you fill the bird seed, you know, as needed. But uh, the problem you may face with that is uh, if you have, as the birds eat, they do drop a certain amount of bird seed, and the soil or the plants underneath the the ground underneath it does begin to grow those seeds. But that's a minor inconvenience for the benefit in which the the birds have, not only for the tomatoes but for other insects that are eating your plants, uh, as well as you can always incorporate a bird a water bath or a bird uh, a watering um, bird bath in your garden to allow them to have some hydration so they may not uh, peck into fruits like tomatoes in order to look for moisture. Another thing is you can uh, attract beneficial insects or bring uh, them in uh, by mail order. Uh, my recommendation would be uh, bring in, uh, uh, have items in the garden that will attract those beneficial insects, such as ladybugs. Uh, praying mantises are not so popular up here, more down in the southern portion, central and southern portions of the United States. But you can mail order ladybugs and you can uh, release them into your garden. Some will fly away, but some will stay in the area. And ladybugs uh, are, are a tremendous feeder of aphids. They can eat many aphids in a day and really help control that population in which can be detrimental to your plants. So that's another thing. Um, uh, ladybugs, spider, uh, soldier bugs, uh, lace wings. Uh, feed on the eggs of the young larvae in some of these instances, as well as the uh, the uh, the parent plants, our parent bugs, uh, insects in this um, also. Uh, and another way of pest control is knowing what was where last year. Remembering that, okay, I had zucchini in this row, I had tomatoes in this row, this was the problem I had with the tomatoes, this was the problem I had with the zucchini. Move those around. I, I understand it can be difficult, more difficult, to move them around in a smaller location, let's say a four by four bed versus an 1800 square foot garden as we garden in. But by, by moving them even just a few feet, you will see a tremendous difference in the uh, amount of success that particular plant will have versus continually growing it in the same spot. One nutrition, nutrition, nutrient deficiency from that location by trying to grow that plant in the same location over and over and over again, the soil will be depleted of nutrients even when you add fertilizer. You, uh, and also the insect population 
the bad insect population will increase because the food is continually going to be there. So by moving the plants around, that will decrease the insect population of the negative on those plants. So that's just some of the many different means of organic pest control. And like I said before, whenever we have a pest, many gardeners, not everybody, but uh, they go and say, okay, I have a problem with bug A. I'm going to go to the garden center, the big box store, and buy a product that is for bug A, and it will spray and kill all the bugs in the um, in the garden. So uh, keeping the plants watered, again, that's one of the biggest things in which you can um, help your plants uh, benefit from uh, pest control. Uh, and, and the finger method, again, you can use gloves if you don't want to use your um, hands in order to remove the uh, bugs. You don't have to pinch them off if you don't want to, you know, get them uh, all gooky and kill them again you can transfer them into a bucket um, bugs uh, ladybugs uh, and you there are specific ways in which uh, you want to distribute the ladybugs uh, you can mail order them and you get like 1500 of them and you can distribute them uh, according to different recommendations uh, on the package and when to do it and how to do it and where to do it in the garden you can also blast these plants with a hose. If you've got a, a, uh, a nozzle on it, you see a plant that's infected with the, the potential aphids or whatever bug it may be, hit it with the hose and that will dislodge some of them. And you can do this with a repetitive method and get a lot of these bugs to dislodge and fall on the ground. And most times when these bugs hit the ground, uh, they don't, they're not able to grow back, they're not able to crawl up the stalk and regrow or reattach themselves because typically the parent plant will lay under the leaf and lay the eggs and that's where the plant will, um, that's where the egg will lay and hatch and the, the pest will eat and feed off of the plant. So when we come back, we're going to go to Washington State to speak with a blogger and podcaster. Melissa Norris will be with us right after this. Use Twitter to reach Joey and Holly at TWVG Show or hashtag TWVG. Do you enjoy hanging baskets but struggle to keep them properly watered? The Plant Booster Self-Watering System is a mechanical system that will ensure optimal soil moisture at all times by reacting to the weight of each plant. The weight of each plant tells the system how much water it needs. Unlike a timer-controlled system where all plants get water at the same time, whether they need it or not. Also ideal for condos or apartments with no outdoor water source. Check out details, videos, and extensive explanation and ideas for application at plantbooster.net. Are you short on time when it comes to grocery shopping? Yes, I'm talking to you. Shopwoodmans.com offers online shopping for store pickup or delivery on their over 60,000 plus items at Woodman's Everyday Low Prices. Or online, select a pickup or delivery time and create more time to do what you want. Leave the work to Woodman's. Also, check out the shopwoodmans.com app. You can even make special requests, like specific sizes of produce. For more information, visit shopwoodmans.com. It's that time to get your lawn lush and green with the Chapin Spreader, the broadcast spreader that outperforms all in their class. Get consistent results year after year as if you'd hired your own professional lawn service. Find Chapin Spreaders online or order through your local Home Depot, Lowe's, True Value, or Do It Best hardware stores. To see the full line of Chapin lawn and garden products, go to www.chapinmfg.com. This season, arm yourself with the better spreader, Chapin. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at flameengineering.com. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at rootassassinshovel.com. Purple Cow Organics quickly and naturally increases the uptake of nutrients and water to your plants with their new bioactive vegetable supercharger designed to meet the unique needs by helping the living organisms in the soil help 
plants uptake the nutrients more quickly through their roots and leaves. Find out more at purplecoworganics.com. The Tree Diaper is an advanced plant hydration system. It is an innovative device that captures and holds the water around your plants once full and hydrates them slowly when the plants need it over a period of 30 days. From half to 30 gallon capacity based on your needs and easy to install even for a first time gardener. The Tree Diaper reduces weeds, protects plants, enhances root growth and prevents overwatering. Whether you're growing trees vegetables, flowers, house plants, in containers, or the ground, your plants will benefit greatly by allowing the Tree Diaper to do the work for you. Find out more at TreeDiaper.com. Made in the USA. An Oya is an unglazed porous clay pot with a short neck and a wider belly. Bury your Oya neck deep in your raised bed, container, or ground garden and let the Oya do your watering by releasing water as needed. How? By soil moisture tension for all you techies out there. This is an eco-friendly, efficient, ancient way to water your plants using up to 70% less water than other irrigation methods. It saves you time and is easy to install. Find a retailer through drippingspringsoils.com. Smart watering, easy gardening. The Handy Safety Knife is a patented, high-quality knife that's worn like a ring, so it's always conveniently at hand and very easy and efficient to work with. That's why you'll find the Handy Safety Knife at work in a wide range of industries and applications. Learn more at HandySafetyKnife.com. Place an order for your business. Call toll-free, 866-294-3424. Use coupon code WVG to get 10% off and free shipping one-time use only at HandySafetyKnife.com. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. My friends, whenever you do your garden, you want it to be successful. You just don't want to put a garden in and make it and have it look terrible, whether it's landscaping or uh, perennial or edible garden. Well, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center is the place that you can go to get the information and the plants that you need. These people do this year-round. This is what they do. They just don't have a garden center for two or three weeks a year like a big box store. They have a knowledgeable staff. Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center uh, knows what they, uh, what you need in order to help you have a successful garden. And they will talk you out of things in which you want to put in that they know will be not so great or will fail in your particular location. So Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center, bluemills.com, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center, 4930 West Loomis Road uh, in Greenfield. You can call them always at 414-282-4220. I was there Wednesday uh, getting some more per, uh, purple cow potty, uh, raised bed mix to help a friend put a raised bed in. Again, it's not too late. She got a ra- root maker raised bed, and we got that planted, and she's ready and going. So uh, let's also go to the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline and bring in our next guest. We're going to go to Washington State. Melissa Norris is a homesteader, podcaster, and blogger, and she loves uh, learning new skills and uh, and and holding on to the old ones that she's been passed down from. She's a follower of Christ and makes that very aware in her videos and podcasts. Welcome to the program, Melissa. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Well, I thank you for taking time and joining us on the program to share some of your gardening and homesteading wisdom with uh, myself and all of our listeners. Yeah, I'm always thrilled to talk homesteading and gardening, so this is going to be fun. Well, you had a, a cancer scare a couple of years ago, and this is not or not not so long ago. Uh, this is something that nobody wants to get news uh, like this. But how did it make you uh, change? What were some changes that you had that uh, that are beneficial now? Yeah, you know, it was about eight years ago when I first had my stomach and my upper esophagus, they were biopsied for cancer, and it came back as not being cancer, but uh, was a catalyst for changing pretty much the way we ate. Now, at the time, we already had a vegetable garden, so I grew up, you know, gardening and canning and raising our own beef, and we were already doing that, but I didn't realize that there was still a lot of items in our home from what we were using to clean, and the ingredients that I was using to cook from scratch, what I thought was cooking from scratch, was still using a lot more convenience items, you know, condensed cans of soup, shortening, those type of things, and so when that happened, Um, I really started to look at the ingredients and the way that food was grown commercially that we weren't growing ourselves. And so I really started to just change everything. I took out anything that was a 
a GMO product, um, things that were highly processed that had hydrogenated oils and fats in them and really just went back to the old ways. So we started raising our own pigs so I could render my own lard and, of course, our own bacon. And we raise everything organically here on our land. And so we now raise 100% of our own meat and then about 50 to 75% of our vegetables and fruits. So we still do buy things from the grocery store, but it drastically changed the way I cook. And the beautiful thing about that is it really transformed my health. So I was able to get off of all of the prescriptions that I was on for ulcers and stomach acid that was just uncontrollable, um, and I've never had to go back on them. So it was completely healed of all of that, and it's been going – actually, nine years plus now. We're coming up on that anniversary. Well, Holly and I, we, we try to eat organically. We're not you know perfect. We, set the, we try to set an example. But if you read the ingredients in some of these, what we believe to be organic or less not, more healthy products, there are some words in there that it takes a scientist to explain what it really is and how bad it can really be for you. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, and we're not 100% perfect either. And I think that's important for people to know that, you know, you do, we do the, the very, you know, the best that we can on a consistent basis. And every now and then you're going to have something that's, you know, not organic or that is processed. But I think it's more the things that we're putting into our bodies on a daily or a consistent basis that make the most impact. It's not the every now and then. But yeah, you got to be careful when it comes to marketing because a lot of times they'll put on packages because they know most people want to be healthy and most people want natural. So they'll put in some sneaky wording. So you really have to flip that thing over and look at the ingredient list and read it. And if it's some, you know, and know what those ingredients are. And if it's simple and it is good, then you're going to know what they are by just reading the ingredient label. When you start to get to those big words, you're like, I have no idea what that means. I can't pronounce that probably a good thing either do a little bit of research or stay away from it absolutely and you always want to be uh proactive instead of reactive it's much better to try to eat healthy before a problem comes than okay i have a problem now i've got to react and try to change my whole life and sometimes it doesn't always end uh, the way you want it to yes that's very true uh you've got a podcast let's call it a radio show type of thing on your website there what kind of topics do you cover and what is the format and and the information that people can retain from it yeah so i have the pioneering today podcast and it's available on my website which is melissaknorris.com and of course itunes stitcher any of the podcasting broadcast apps that we've all got and we cover everything uh modern homesteading self-sufficiency health, doing it from scratch, you know, all of those old-fashioned traditional skill sets. So we talk about definitely raising your own food with using organic methods. So in the garden, we talk about, of course, from scratch cooking, food preservation, from safe canning to fermenting your food, doing cultured foods. Um, we talk about, you know, organizing your, your kitchen and your food storage, um, pretty much, you know, and we do a lot of it seasonally. So we'll go through, you know, a whole year seasonally on the podcast. And it's between usually about 25 to 30 minute show, um, pretty much ad free for the most part. And so you will just get straight to business. And we bring on special guests. So sometimes there'll be interviews with kind of experts in that field. Um, and most of the time, I am just sharing, you know, the knowledge that I that I have gained in the way that we do things on the homestead and answering readers' questions. Um, so it's a pretty compact show. You get a lot of information within that episode. And I want to make it clear, just because you have the name homesteader, that doesn't mean the information is not relatable to people that live in apartments, urban settings, in the city. It, homestead, people have the perception, oh, I don't have four acres or 10 acres or 100. Forget it. It's not for me. You've got a lot of practical information that people can do in their kitchen, even by buying produce from the farmer's market and bringing in and utilizing that information that you've provided. Absolutely. You know, and, and we've got, I've got a lot of what I call my apartment homesteaders, and I cover those topics too. So I try to go like if you're in an apartment and you've got a window seal, here's the stuff that you can take. You know, if you've got a little bit bigger patio, backyard, here's what you can do. If you've got some acreage, here's where you're going to go. So yes, and because homesteading is a state of mind first, and anybody can take homesteading practices and put them into use wherever you are right now. 
many people uh, do garden practices because it's been passed down from their grandparents and down through generations. But now science has proven some of these things to be, let's just call it what it is, a waste of time. There's no proof that it works. You've got a po- you've got a uh, post on your garden on your website about garden myths. Uh, we love talking about garden myths because we like saving people time. What is one that you found to be very interesting that uh, you it was very beneficial to learn from that you saved time now not doing it? Yeah, well, you know, one of the things that I actually, for me, was the most beneficial is I had a really tough time learning how to grow tomatoes. And I always heard that, you know, tomatoes are really easy to grow in containers and tomatoes are like one of the easiest plants here. Everybody just put one on your patio. I had a really tough time with tomatoes. And part of it is I do live in the Pacific Northwest. So normally we get a lot of rain and tomatoes aren't so keen on getting wet for blight. And so the other problem was, is I had my tomatoes, I would just have one, you know, a couple of big plants and I would have them in these containers and they would never fruit for me. So I was really frustrated. And what I learned is with your tomatoes is they actually really like to have a real, they have a big root system. So if you're going to put them in a container, it needs to be a really deep and large container for their root system. They really do the best too if you can get them in the ground because of that root system. And then once I was able to do that and I got them buried really deep, now we grow a year's worth of tomatoes. I grow about 25 plants, and off those plants, we get enough tomatoes to preserve all of our tomato sauce, all of our stewed tomatoes, all of our salsa, everything, and takes us through the entire year. But the other thing that I didn't realize is they will set their blossom, and obviously that's what their fruit comes from. But part of the problem I had is I had them sheltered because I wanted to keep them out of the rain, didn't want to deal with blight. But they weren't getting the blossoms, they're self-pollinating. So you actually can just have one tomato plant and you will get fruit. But the blossoms need a little bit of air movement, and they weren't getting that because I had them sheltered up against the house. They weren't getting much of a breeze. And so putting them out or just gently shaking them when they have their blossoms will help the pollen inside that blossom, will help it get distributed and can also help it fruit. And so... I learned it's not maybe necessarily a huge gardening myth, but for me it was kind of it was life changing because I struggled with the tomatoes. Is if you're going to put them in a container, make sure that bad boy is really big and that they've got some airflow. Absolutely, many people struggle with growing vegetables in their garden, and they don't know why. And when you start digging into the question, or the, when I start asking questions, uh, have you had a soil test done? No. Well, and and we find out that either the soil is too acidic or too alkaline. What are some ways in which we can amend the soil to get it either one or the other to get it more balanced for many of the vegetables in which we grow in our gardens? Yeah, that is that is a really good thing to bring up because a lot of people don't realize that that is the issue. And I highly agree getting a soil test is going to give you the absolute most accurate results so that you really know how much to amend um, and what you're lacking in. And this actually falls under our gardening myth very well because a lot of times if you need to increase the acidity of your soil, there's a lot of times you'll see recommendations of adding, you know, peat moss and coffee grounds and different things. And peat moss and coffee grounds have some wonderful things that they can help and do with our soil. But when it comes to actually increasing um, your acidity level, they don't really do such a hot job on that. And so the the best thing that you're going to give you the most reliable and to make sure is that you get elemental sulfur. So this is the most reliable. And as long as you get elemental sulfur, don't just get gardening sulfur because then that does not that can have aluminum in it. Make sure it says elemental sulfur in it. Um, that is going to help increase your pH level. And you also want to make sure when you apply it to your soil that you never try to increase it more than 1% in a calendar year. So you're only going to be able to move it one. So say your soil is at a, a 7 on the pH scale and you need to get it down to a 6. Don't ever try to you know lower it all the way down to like a 5.5 or a 5 in one year. Just go slowly. And then on the flip side, if your soil is too acidic and you need to make it more alkaline, or sometimes you'll hear people say they need to, they need to sweeten the soil, um, an organic option that works really good is using lime. Now, 
there's some varying viewpoints on this. Um, lime is usually made from crushed limestone versus ground up oyster shells. So both of these are a way that we can amend our soil. Both are going to increase your alkalinity, but if your soil, and this is where knowing having your soil tested so you know what it's lacking in, if your soil already has a high magnesium level, then you don't want to use lime. Instead, you're going to want to go the route of ground up oyster shells. Absolutely. Well, Melissa, we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to share your garden knowledge and homesteading knowledge with all of us. How can our listeners find out more about you and, again, uh, get those podcasts that you have uh, on your website? Yeah, everything is at MelissaKNorris.com. You'll see the button there for the Pioneering Today podcast. You can listen to it straight on the website, of course, on iTunes or Stitcher, any of those. And I look forward to helping everybody grow a great garden. Well, thank you very much, Melissa. We greatly appreciate your time. And Thanks when, so much for having me on. Absolutely. And when we come back, your garden questions and our garden answers right after this. If you have a gardening question, now is the time to call in on the IVOrganics.com 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline at 414-444-5250. Eco Garden Systems is a revolutionary way to grow food, a fully contained raised platform with a conventional watering system, solar power unit optional. Made from recycled material in the U.S., Eco Garden Systems Raised Garden Bed offers sustainable, organic gardening that is environmentally sound, quick and easy to set up, maintain, and fun to use. Fill your garden with soil and plant your seeds. Your Eco Garden will take care of the rest. Can set up in backyard, patio, and even your driveway, any level surface. For more information, visit EcoGardenSystems.com. Use coupon code WIVEG125 to save $125 and get free shipping. A $250 value on the purchase of an Eco Garden original garden unit available only in stone color. Purchases must be made to the website EcoGardenSystems.com forward slash store. Offer valid through December 31st, 2018. Available to the contiguous United States. Beans and Barley Marketing Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side of the greater Milwaukee area where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cars, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available, open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 278 and online at beansandbarley.com. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. Bobex is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. Bobex deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. Bobex can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. I support by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more? Visit Bobex.com. B-O-B-B. E-X-dot-C-O-M. The Gardener's Hollow Leg, the debris and harvesting bag you wear, comes with its own belt attachment, perfect for doing light pruning, weeding, harvesting on the ground or on a ladder, and many other uses. Find out more at thegardenershollowleg.com. Save 10% by using the word veggies at checkout. Zaz Products, offering great quality supplements that can help personal health and increase longevity. Committed to bringing you the highest quality products at the lowest price. Find out more at zazproducts.com. Hostels wants to help you grow your own food. From seed starting supplies, hand tools, drip irrigation, harvesting equipment, and a complete line of all-natural pest control solutions, they've got you covered. Keep your garden weed-free with their time-tested, American-made wheel hose that are built to last a lifetime. And the Precision Garden Seeders have proven design for planting a wide variety of seeds. Haas Tools has what you need to get the most out of your growing space, large or small. Free shipping and outstanding customer service. Shop online or request a free catalog at HaasTools.com. I know you're looking for an alternative to harsh chemicals, but you want professional strength products. BioSafe's Garden Line gives you just that. Professionally used for 20 years, available to homeowners. Organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products from plant food, fertilizer, to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. BioSafe's products can be used around children, pets, wildlife, so you can enjoy your yard more. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Find us on Facebook at BioSafe Home and Garden and visit us at BioSafe.net to learn more. Get 10% off your next purchase at BioSafe.net by using coupon code TWVG at checkout. 
The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mills also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mills today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. Back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your host Joey and Kelly Baird. Always happy when we have callers call in with their garden questions. Let's go to the IV Organics Three in One Plant Guard Hotline. Caller, you are on the air. Caller, yeah. you were, yeah, go ahead. Uh, first question I had is: uh, Are newspapers a good mulch for around your vegetable plants? Absolutely. Uh, newspapers, just as long as you don't get the glossy kind, the, the inserts from your uh, the inside of the paper, the just traditional newspaper is fine. It's got a soy-based ink, so it's organic. You don't have to worry about any toxicity for that. Okay. And uh, the other one I had is I started doing it last year, but I used boiling water to kill off the weeds. That, that definitely will work. Uh, when I was growing up on the farm, when we did canning, uh, water bath canning, we'd use that hot water. Once we got done, we'd take it out and pour it in the cracks on the sidewalk or along the, the perimeter or wherever we had weeds at that we wanted to kill. It works great. Scolds okay. the plants and, and uh, very organic, mean, very good organic means of weed control. Because uh, years ago I knew a uh, farmer that uh, – was selling vegetables at West Dallas uh, Farmer's Market. Well, he used to get his soil in by the truckload, and then he had a boiler. Mm -hmm. And what he would do is throw a hose of steam underneath the soil before he planted any seedlings into that. And I'm thinking, well, how can a home gardener do something like that, you know, to uh, make your soil uh, so it doesn't have weed seeds in it? Right, just a, a proper composting method of, of heating the internal portion of that compost pile up uh, will kill those weed seeds uh, without any problem uh, at all. Oh. Or putting the pile, uh, putting a pile of compost and putting black uh, plastic over top of it over the summer, and it will okay. bake, bake, the, bake that compost and kill any viable weed seeds. Okay, and I had one other question. Last year, uh, about May, I got garlic seeds or cloves, mm -hmm. and I planted them, and then I marked each one with a golf tee to see if any of them came up. And so far this year, out of maybe 28 uh, pieces of clove in the garden, none of them came up. Uh, could be, where did you get the, the cloves or the garlic from, the uh, farmer's market or the grocery store? Uh, Steins. Okay. Uh, could be just a bad batch. It could be the way it was handled. Uh, it could be a variety of different ways uh, in which the seed was not viable in order to, to grow them. Okay. Now, you planted them this spring, right? Yeah, we did some spring garlic, just experimental process, but we traditionally plant the first Saturday in October and harvest the okay. last week in June. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Bye now. And you're always welcome to send us an email of your problem at TWVG show at gmail.com and if you're able to please attach a photograph of the issue and describe it as well so our identification and uh, answer uh, is much easier we can figure out what's going on how do i control bugs and mites on my hollyhock plant well hollyhocks are a drought tolerant plant uh, that uh, is a perennial uh, is a biannual or short-lived perennial that generally recedes itself and has multiple clusters of plants after it recedes. But there are bugs that come in and take care of those 
clusters at times, uh, leaving the plant uh, injured and the, the leaves fall off and it can also kill the plant. So it's not always the best uh, situation there. So uh, spider mites are one of the problems. You, they're Japanese beetles as well, and that can be controlled by uh, insecticides and sprays. Also, just putting the pheromone trap far away from the plant and enticing the Japanese beetles to go in that direction, not at the plants in which they're uh, destroying. Spider mites are, there's several different kinds of spider mites that the hollyhock plant can uh, uh, attract or have problems with. You, you can see spider uh, tiny webbing underneath it. You can also see um, flake uh, flecking of the leaves or uh, spots, yellow spots on the leaves. And pr um, premature leaf drop is also. Mites are small and very, vis very uh, hard to see. Um, just by looking at it, they prefer the hot, dry conditions of summer based on the year we may or may not have that. Um, they, they Again, they produce that very fine webbing. Uh, to control the spider mites, here's a couple of things in which you can do. One, avoid over-fertilization. That, that's one of them. Uh, and then, if possible, um, we can't really control the weather. You can knock the mites off with a vigorous spraying of water. You can use insecticides. Um, but the problem or, or chemicals, but the problem that I would warn you with that is these chemicals that are designed to kill in this instance, the spider mites is not designed to avoid the beneficial insects that you have in your environment, in your backyard. These are non-selective. They're going to kill anything that is, you know, is designed for that species, whether it's soft, soft bodied or flying insects, whatever, it's going to kill all of them. Now with the tomatoes, uh, when we deal with spider mites, well, it's a pre uh, a pre deter a pr a method that we do before the problem exists is we take two tablespoons of liquid seaweed to one gallon of water and we spray the plants every two to three weeks, and that toughens the leaves on the tomato plants. And it doesn't kill the spider mites, but it causes them to go elsewhere because they can't chew into the leaves. I'm not for sure the structure, the leaf structure of a hollyhock plant. Uh, and I don't know if that would work or not, but it's uh, something that could be experimented with. But um, so that's that's how you can deal with the spider mites or bugs on your hollyhock plant. I have creeping Charlie in my garden. Can you help me? What do I do to get rid of it? Well, number one, creeping Charlie is a problem in our garden as well. Uh, creeping Charlie is edible. Uh, it's considered a wild food. It's part of the mint family. It has a peppery taste. Uh, if you're going to eat it, you want to properly identify it and it, uh, eat it as a young plant. Uh, what occurs is it will root underground and pop back up, much like you would see a raspberry cane do. It goes to certain places underground and pops up. So it's very hard to control it. So if you have it in your garden, one, you can continue to pull it out and try to stress the plant out that way. Uh, BioSafe does work in killing the plant. It may not kill this, the, we, the, the roots that it propagates from under the soil, but it will kill the vegetation on top, and you can t continue to apply that application of BioSafe until you uh, basically stress the plant out or weaken it to the point where it doesn't come back. Now, that can take some time. The uh, the uh, you can use very harsh chemicals to uh, purge the beds of it or your garden with it, but then you've got that toxicity in your soil. Another way, or the easiest way, is if you sacrifice an area of your garden, uh, ten foot by four foot area, whatever the case is, and cover it with black plastic for the summer. Hold the plastic down with logs or bricks or whatever. What you're doing is allowing the radiation of the sun to intensely bake the soil underneath that black plastic. And you can get your black plastic from your local hardware store. And you're baking the soil. You're baking all the viable weed seeds. You're baking all the vegetation that's underneath there and basically uh, cleansing the bed of the problem. Now, there are if you go deep enough in the soil, there are weed seeds that can stay dormant up to 80 years. So once you remove that plastic, uh, the microbial life is gone until you revitalize the soil with compost, manure tea, compost tea, coffee grounds, that type of thing. You can work it back in the soil, but you may kick up some of those weed seeds. But the predominant problem of Creeping Charlie will be eradicated. The only problem is it can come in from adjacent areas of your garden. So keep that in mind. But that is one way to get rid of it. Well, we are out of time, and we certainly appreciate your time tuning in and telling your friends each week that we are on the air. 
programming note. Join us next week when we're going to debunk some common garden myths as well as how to make kombucha. We're in the process at our home doing it, and we'll tell you how we do it and how you can do it and what kombucha is, as well as Ryan Graham. He is a graduate of the Milwaukee-based Teens Grow Greens program. We're going to talk to him about what the organization is, how you can help with it, and how it helps young teens get their skills to go into the world and uh, how they're making a difference in our community. Miss any portion of this program or want to revisit it in its entirety, you can certainly do that by clicking on the radio tab at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and or the highlight tab on the main page. Till next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You have been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Tell a friend and join Joey and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcasting, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communications Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.